how do we implement mutation without mutable constructs? So as our motivating example, we talked about the Lambda F, which was a language that had a naive implementation of defines. And the problem we got was because our implementation is immutable, uh, we weren't able to capture uh, the actual semantics of racket because the actual semantics of racket included a form of mutability. So how does that manifest itself? So the, the motivating example is as follows. So let's, let me annotate before each line of code the environment that we, that the following uh, line has access to. So once we start executing this program from top to bottom, the first line uh, we're defining B, and B has access to an empty environment because no variables have been defined so far. So after we execute this line, um, now we have B defined, and B, as we know, is a runtime um, function declaration, which is known as a closure or a function value. Um, and we have some environment here, which we leave unspecified because we don't really know how to represent that. But the idea is that this closure is somehow, um, should be somehow related to this environment, or at least the empty environment so far. Um, in, in the first, in our own implementation, this question mark, question mark was indeed the empty environment because that's the environment that is available upon creation of the closure. However, that is not the case because when we run this program in Racket, let me run that. Oops. When we run this program in Racket, let's put blank Racket. We still get 20 um, because A is 20, which means somehow the closure that was already in the environment had access to the to A, right? But once we created something, how can we mutate it? So somehow there's some notion of mutability, right? The closure that is here, question mark, question mark, somehow should be able to have access to the A that is defined in the same level, right? So that's basically how Racket um, encodes an environment. So it's not really our notion on environment, the one at least that we were um, using so far. It's something that is a bit more involved. We have to keep track of the, the level, let's say, or the scope in which the variable was, the function was created, right? So here the function is created and the environment that is, that it accesses is all of this, including variables that are defined after. Okay, so what we need, uh, and you can imagine that being easily representable if you do if you just use a mutable data structure and then just update it but the way we are you teaching the way I'm teaching this course we don't have access to mutability so you may be wondering um, how do I even do this how do I represent or encode mutability in an immutable setting and that's going to be the subject of today's lecture <coughs> 